All right. Now, if you remember last time we were together, talked a lot about strategy, right? Campaigns, the Benjamins. So with this one, I want us to think about a couple of different audiences <coughs> that are going to be very critical when it comes to communication, demonstrating its worth and its value. <coughs> we're going to look at media relations and then employee communications. So way to think about these two things together would be the most external and the most internal audiences, right? So if we're talking about media relations, we're talking about way over here in the media, as well as general public and many other things. And then we're also talking about the, the internal people as well. And so you can kind of see it on this chart, if you remember this from one of our other earlier units. Um, but let's jump right in here and we think about these different <laughs> specialties. So <clears throat> this is really uh, a couple of definitions, right? And I want to give you kind of, well, really, it's more like goals for each of these, right? So you can see it for, for media relations. It's to learn how communication professionals, corporate communication can best strategically liaise or connect, right? Be the go between between media to influence coverage to key stakeholders, right? Then with employee communication, it's going to turn the focus inside, right? To help build connection between employees and their organizations so that they can meet their individual needs but also use employees as really important brand ambassadors for the organization, right? So again, we want to use both audiences to try to make connections with society. That's between organizations and society. That's really what both of these specialties are. By the way, there's a lot of specialties, right? If we were to kind of go back here, public affairs, issues management, investor relations, media relations, those are actually all specialties. And we'd also have crisis in there and issues, all kinds of, or government relations. We're just going to talk about a couple of them here with media relations and employee relations. So let's let's jump in here. All right. First thing, just kind of a zoom out and look over what media relations is all about. It's all about different audiences and the key stakeholders for media relations, not surprisingly, or members of the media, right? Writers, editors, producers in all kinds of formats. So print and broadcast and digital don't underestimate the the, the relevance even today of a good old fashioned uh, journalist that may write in digital, but nonetheless, it's very similar to when they, when it was print in terms of what the process looks like. Right. And we're going to kind of go through some of those. I'll give you some examples as we go along, but it's actually, especially when we think about like the work that public relations professionals do, it's actually still fairly traditional in the sense of, for instance, media pitching, right. It's really popular. So if you have an idea for a story, you know, you would call on, you would call, uh, a writer, a member of the media, and you would say, hey, I've got an idea for a story. What do you think? Right. So very similar to the way it was done. If you think about like the show, um, like some of the old TV shows, you know, that would focus on like PR professionals and you know, media spin and those kind of things. It's all about being strategic and trying to be a go between from the organization to the public. And it's very scientific, very systematic in the way that it's done in terms of how um, how <clears throat> members of organizations target very specific types of media for their stories. Um, I want to talk a little bit, you know, we've talked a lot in this course about reputation and image. What I want us to think about, the media has the ability to amplify the news, right? To amplify the, the reputation, which of course could be good or bad, right? So the bottom line is something happens and the way that the media can, can, can spin things, can portray things, has a massive impact on how the media, how the the public are going to um, you know are going to interpret it. So if you think about just our course being about organizations and society and or, and, and society's understanding of organizations, a lot of times is impacted by the media. It may not be traditional media, but it may just be what people you know see in social media, for instance, right? Um, and they feel like that's that's the ultimate form of reality when we see a lot of coverage about an organization. So let's just think about a couple of examples. One, you know, you think about a big company like McDonald's, no matter what McDonald's does, they're going to be in the news because they're massive. So it could be good. It could be bad. Nevertheless, they have a target on their back. People are watching. Another example that I was thinking about was, you know, just big pharma in general. I like this image right here because it shows, you know, the power of big pharma. Right. And certainly political candidates are always talking about big pharma from both sides. Right. Um, and so, again, a lot of coverage and that can impact how we view those those particular organizations or even an entire industry in the case of pharmaceuticals. Um, so one thing that I want us to think about just from a communication standpoint is the, the idea of framing. This is really important. So there's a couple of different frames that are talked about in your book. One is the corporate frame. And I want you to think about that as 
the corporate frame is really, if there's going to be news coverage of, of us as an organization, we want that coverage to be spun a certain way. We want it to be this, a story that we can control, right? Like an organization would want to be able to write its own story. Unfortunately, that's just not the way everything works. It's got to be, uh, there's got to be, uh, it's got to be written from a news frame as well, right? So just imagine if you worked for an organization and uh, a reporter wants to do a story and they interview you. Um, you certainly want to make sure that they they're getting your side of the story, right? As a, as an organization, as a corporation, but then at the end of the day, the news frame is all about trying to write the story in such a way that it gets reads, it gets clicks, it gets shares, right? So they're trying to appeal to a broader audience. Whereas for a corporation, you may have a target audience that you're going for it as well. The key is to align these frames, right? So media relations professionals within organizations or within PR firms, for instance, need to be very astute at how, how, trying to figure out how to, how to frame and, and, and make sure that we can tell our side of the story as an organization, but then do it in such a way that the news are going to want to write about it as well. And, it, and it's going to be, you know, going to be brought, you know, they're going to want to take the story and go. Um, and so I just put a couple of examples up here, but for instance, you think about like the, um, the uh, crisis on uh, global warming, right? How that's been framed in, um, by certain corporations or ignored by certain corporations, nevertheless, it's in the news. So different, different examples of framing. I'll put a headline up here. That's actually um, one that's fairly recent, but if you can see it up there, her evangelical mega church was her world. Then her daughter said she was molested by a minister. And you can think about uh, the organization that this was referencing. Um, you know, if you, it's hard to imagine a, a worst headline, right? If you're in, so the corporate, from a corporate perspective, not a good headline to have, but from a news perspective, it would be an amazing headline because people would want to read it. So again, if you're, if, if you're a media relations person talking to the media within this particular organization, you know, you would want to try to try to make sure that the story reflects what really happens, what really happened. And it wasn't just sensationalized. But so those are the two main frames that are talked about in media relations in our book. But I also want to present a third one that's not always talked about, but it's the idea of the social frame. And this is really the, the, the framing that's done through, through social media, right? So you have the corporate frame. So an organization has a certain angle they want uh, a story to be told. Then you have the news frame and they're going to try to control the story their way and write it their way. But then nowadays you have social media, which is going to be a totally different form of framing. Um, and so, the key takeaway there is it's becoming more, it's becoming increasingly more difficult for organizations to control their narrative, right? To frame their stories in the way that they would like them to be framed um, because primarily of this third frame, which again is not talked about a lot in the, uh, in the book, but is, but is incredibly important. 